After reviewing hundreds of peer-reviewed studies and official documents, I've collated irrefutable proof that many mainstream supplements sold in the US contain additives that pose serious health risks. We're talking about substances officially classified as carcinogens, chemicals banned by entire continents, and petroleum-derived compounds that the government's own cancer research agency says cause cancer. That's why today I'm on a mission to reveal the five most dangerous fillers hiding in your supplements. Because if you value your health, then not a single one of these toxic additives should ever pass your lips. And if you think you're safe just because you're using one of the big brands, then think again, because we're about to shatter that particular misconception. Of course, some will argue that the fillers we're discussing here today have all been deemed safe for use by the FDA. And indeed they have. But as you'll see, that's ultimately what makes the situation all the more criminal. So if you're someone who bases their supplement consumption on rather more stringent safety guidelines than the FDA might require, then this presentation is most definitely aimed at you. The uncomfortable truth is that the vast majority of supplement brands use synthetic fillers and flow agents in their products. Not because they need to, but because it keeps production costs down, thereby increasing profits. However, not a single one of these additives benefits your health. Quite the opposite, in fact, and worse still, not a single one is necessary. Filler-free supplements and supplements using safe fillers are becoming more popular than ever. So vote with your wallet and let those guilty brands know that you won't stand for their nonsense any longer. But of course, we first need to know exactly which problematic additives to look out for in the label. So let's expose the five most dangerous fillers and flow agents that may be hiding in your supplements, because these five in particular are the worst you'll encounter, streets ahead of anything else. Then, armed with this knowledge, avoiding suspect products will be a breeze. And in an attempt to add some dramatic effect, I've ranked the fillers saving the worst to last. I'll tell you what each filler is made from, why it's in there, plus I'll present the scientific evidence documenting the health risks. I'll also highlight a couple of safe alternatives commonly used by more reputable brands. Then lastly, as an example, I'll randomly choose a few products that contain the offending filler. So by the end of this presentation, you'll be a veritable expert. But before we kick things off with the dodgy filler in the fifth place, a very quick shameless plug for my preferred longevity supplement brand, Do Not Age. And that's because they have an unbeatable range of ultra pure filler free health products, many of which I use myself. And you can enjoy exactly the same discount that I'm privy to by using my exclusive 10% discount code, which will work for all Do Not Age products, including subscriptions and special offers. Now back to those dodgy fillers. And kicking things off, we have propylene glycol. Now this little beauty is derived from petroleum through chemical processing, and it's completely synthetic. And yes, you'd be quite right in thinking that it's the same compound used in antifreeze, albeit in far lower concentrations in supplements. Some brands add propylene glycol to certain products as a solvent and moisture retention agent, helping to dissolve ingredients and maintain product consistency. Now we do have studies linking propylene glycol exposure to liver abnormalities and kidney damage, although admittedly at dosages over 100 times greater than typical exposure levels. But for me at least, that's not the point. Firstly, I don't want antifreeze in my supplements in any amount, no matter what agency is telling me it's safe. I think I'll decide what's safe for myself, especially as after I did a bit of digging, I stumbled across this hidden gem. You see, it turns out that although propylene glycol does have to be listed on the label, the amount does not. And guess what else? Unlike in Europe, in the US there's no legal limit on the amount of propylene glycol allowed in supplements, only in food where it's 2%. But in supplements, they can legally put in as much as they want without telling you. So in reality, you really do have no idea exactly how much you're ingesting. Thankfully, propylene glycol is easy to avoid. Just check the label. And for your information, some brands do use perfectly safe alternatives, vegetable glycerine and MCT oil being two examples. And lastly, here's two popular supplements containing propylene glycol that you might want to avoid. Next up, we have sodium benzoate, which is commonly added to supplements as a preservative, extending shelf life by preventing bacterial and mold growth. It's synthetically manufactured from benzoic acid and sodium hydroxide, and so it's completely artificial. However, the real issue is that when sodium benzoate is combined with vitamin C, it becomes particularly dangerous. And that's because sodium benzoate forms benzene when combined with vitamin C, especially under heat and light. 
And since benzene is a known human carcinogen that causes leukemia, it's probably best to avoid it. Although that will take some diligence because you'll find it in quite a few popular vitamin C and multivitamin products. And here's a few of them. Of course, all this is quite hard to get your head around when we consider the degree of stupidity and negligence that it must take to include sodium benzoate in a vitamin C supplement in the first place, especially when we have the option to use harmless alternatives such as rosemary extract for one. The evidence against sodium benzoate is damning and the FDA even acknowledges the dangers when it's combined with vitamin C. But rather than ban the combination as any sane person would, the FDA's answer is to issue guidance, suggesting that companies avoid using the combo. Well, voluntary compliance is patently not working, is it? I woke up this morning with this thought in my head and I thought, you know, I should probably put this out there and see what your thoughts are. So we know that water is required for sodium benzoate and vitamin C to react together to form toxic benzene, especially in the presence of heat, light or simply over time. For example, sitting on a store shelf for weeks or months on end. However, we're told that adding sodium benzoate to tablets and capsules is not an issue, as these mediums are dry. But if you think about it, we consume capsules with a glass of water, might there be sufficient time while in the stomach's acidic environment for even the tiniest amount of benzene to form? Now I'm guessing probably not, but then I'm not a chemist so I can't answer that. But what I can tell you is this, I exclude sodium benzoate from all my supplements as a cautionary measure. Up next we have a real showstopper and that's BHA short for butylated hydroxyanisole. Now this stuff is actually a petroleum derived synthetic chemical made from oil refinery byproducts and it gets put in some supplements as a preservative specifically to prevent fats and oils from going rancid. That's why you may find it in fish oil and other soft gels such as liquid vitamins as it can extend shelf life from months to years. However, there's a huge problem with this stuff and that's because BHA is officially classified as a carcinogen by the US government's own cancer research agency. Yet the FDA still allows this known carcinogen in supplements. This is a perfect example of regulatory failure. One government agency says it causes cancer while another says it's safe. Which side are you going to believe? The FDA? Thought not. The very fact that some brands are still adding a known carcinogen to their health supplements is in my opinion an act of the greatest negligence and a major breach of consumer trust. Again, check labels, vote with your wallet. Now labeling laws state that BHA must be listed on label. So if there's no sign of it on there, then you're good to go. You'll generally only find it in budget products anyways. It's much cheaper to add BHA than it is to use vitamin E as a preservative, as do more responsible brands. Lastly, here's a couple of supermarket supplements containing BHA, which I guess whole families may be unwittingly taking. You know, I still can't believe they're putting that stuff in there. Our runner up next, and that honor goes to titanium dioxide. Mined from titanium ore, then chemically processed into nanoparticles, this stuff is added as a whitening agent and opacity enhancer. So it's basically used to make your supplements look nicer. But what else might it do? Most concerning is a 2017 study which found that titanium dioxide nanoparticles cause DNA damage, disrupt immune function, and accumulate permanently in body tissues. Then, in 2021, the European Food Safety Authority concluded that titanium dioxide can no longer be considered safe as a food additive, with genotoxicity and body accumulation cited as the concerns. As a result, in 2022, titanium dioxide was banned as a food additive in Europe, yet here in the US, the FDA still considers it safe and its use in supplements is not restricted. So what we're essentially saying is that this EU ban affects 450 million people who are now protected from titanium dioxide exposure, while Americans remain unprotected, despite the same scientific evidence. Now if anyone can think of a legitimate argument as to why it might be a good idea to add this stuff to a health supplement in any amount, then I'd love to hear it. And by the way, there's no shortage of safe alternative whiteners that can be used, such as rice starch and calcium carbonate. But honestly, why bother at all? It's purely cosmetic. And here's a couple of random supplements that contain titanium dioxide that you might want to avoid. Today's winner and the king of undesirable fillers is talc, which is actually just another name for magnesium silicate, which is mined from underground talc deposits and possesses inherent toxicity. 
In fact, talc represents the most serious health risk among supplement additives, with extensive research linking it to cancer. And yes, it's essentially the same stuff that some people slap on after a bath. Which of course begs the question, what's it doing in some supplements? Well, apparently it's there as an anti-caking agent, which is all the more criminal when we consider there's harmless alternatives available such as ground rice hulls and tapioca starch. The evidence linking talc to cancer includes a 2019 Taiwanese population-based study following 1 million people, which found that talc exposure more than doubled the risk of stomach cancer. More concerning though is that this increased risk occurred with exposure similar to what one might expect from the regular consumption of a talc-containing supplement. We also have multiple meta-analyses compiled by the International Agency for Research on Cancer that classify talc as a group 2b carcinogen, with consistent links to ovarian, lung and endometrial cancers. And I've linked to three separate talc cancer studies in the video description for those who might want to read more. I think it's safe to conclude then that talc shouldn't be anywhere near our health supplements. In fact, I wouldn't even put it on my skin. And that's because we have a 2017 study linking talc inhalation to a 45% increased risk of lung cancer. And if that wasn't bad enough, we have a 2016 study that found an association between talc application to the genital area and ovarian cancer, increasing risk by 33%. I'm actually just at a flashback of talc fights that I used to have with my brother. That's probably a memory I best block out under the circumstances. And here's a couple of talc containing supplements that you might want to avoid. And of course, there's loads more out there. So always read the label. In fact, if you haven't already done so, I'd recommend giving all your current supplement labels the once over for peace of mind. And as a bonus, in the video description, I've also included a list of several other common fillers that you might also want to avoid. The fact is that the vast majority of supplements don't even require fillers. Fillers really only need to be added when the milligram amount of the active ingredient is so small that it needs to be mixed with something inert, even just to fill a tiny capsule. But in most other cases, fillers are there just to keep production costs down and don't have any other benefit. Although some tablet supplements may require binders and liquid supplements a carrier. I really hope you found value in this presentation and that you now feel empowered to make more informed supplement buying decisions. It's time to vote with our wallets and let supplement companies know that if a customer's health is not their absolute top priority, then the last thing they're getting their greedy hands on is our hard-earned cash. Force compliance or put them out of business. Because ultimately, we have the power to control the market, but only if there's enough of us on board. Many thanks for watching and as always, take care, be healthy, and I'll see you again soon.